Good evening, everybody. We're live in the pits of Motor Cast. It's your host, Dave. I got Leah Oaks on the line, Drag Racer. How are you doing, Leah? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. And your husband, Gary, is here, the mechanic for the car. Hey, Gary. How you doing? Good. So, how? when did you guys uh, start start getting into all this drag racing? We cut out there a little bit. I think uh, that's when we started. Yeah, so when, when, did, when did you guys get started in drag racing? The first, um, the first lead sled started in 2013. Um, we were um, following my brother around, watching him race, and uh, my husband said, you know, if we're spending all this time at the track, we should we should build a car. And uh, I said, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like to drive. And um, so it kind of started like that as a project. And I think maybe he thought that I'd uh, take, a, take a spin or two down the track and say, okay, I'm done. And uh, that was quite the opposite that happened. So it, it, that's where it all began. And then, as you know, we uh, put the lead sled in the wall last year in May. And uh, the resurrection is just about finished. So we're ready to roll that out. So now, how many cars have you drag raced in since you started? Since the, just the lead sled since 2013. Um, I mean, I grew up in a in a hot rod family. My stepdad raced. My brothers uh, brothers raced. Three of my brothers um, have raced or do still race. And um, so it's just kind of something that we grew up doing. You know, we, our weekends were spent at the racetrack and watching my stepdad, and then it progressed to my brothers and. And my first car was a, a 1972 Nova that had a shift kit, and uh, I ran around the streets of Oklahoma. Thought I was thought I was bad, you know, probably not quite as fast as I thought I was, but I had a good time. So it's just kind of been in my in my blood, the, you know, since since I was a kid. And um, Gary grew up the same thing, you know. He's a, he was a gearhead his whole life, so it just kind of was a natural progression for us, and especially together, something that we enjoy as a team. So now for the lead foot car, what was the fastest run time you had with it? <laughs> um, well, I, I'm not supposed to say my time. Um, and and the, the lead sled motor survived the crash, and it's still, it's still alive and in someone else's car, so I probably shouldn't share what the fastest time was. But we, we were sub five, I'll say that. Sub five seconds in the, in the eighth. So, so with the with the new car, are you looking to go faster than that? Absolutely, absolutely. Always the goal is to go faster. Um, our our first setup was an LS motor. Um, we ran nitrous. Uh, we had a nitrous outlet um, play, uh, fogger and a nitrous express plate. And um, the new setup will be a an LS mo- an LS motor with a turbo. So we're going turbo this time. Now let, let me talk to Gary for a minute. I'm here. Go ahead. So, so Gary, with the lead foot, what what kind of engine was in that car? The first go round. Yeah, the first car. So we started with a uh, six liter block and built the four hundred eight, and um, after that we upgraded it to an LSX block. Um, 440 cubic inch with uh, Brodick head done by Frankenstein and um, the two uh, nitro systems that Leah was just talking about. What, what, what kind of tires did you guys run on that car? Then, then with the with the new car, what kind of engine are you going to be putting in that one? So the new one is going to be um, a new aluminum block uh, developed by Concept Performance called an LSR block. So it's kind of like an all aluminum LSX block. Now is this um, car, this car going to run on nitrous oxide as well? It's going to have a uh, nitrous outlet uh, turbo spooler on it. But it will be a uh, precision turbo. Hmm. So it will be it's going to be turbo. You're saying? Yeah, it'll be a single turbo. We're shooting for two thousand horsepower. Nice. Yep. So, so you you started it out in a drag racing family as well? Um, I've been a, I've been uh, my family 
family owned a body shop and an automotive shop growing up, so I've been doing this kind of thing my whole life. So how how did you get into drag racing? Um, I mean, I was into it as a kid, and then uh, I guess I got back into it hanging out with Leah's family and uh, watching them race, and then when she said she uh, wanted to get into it, we decided to build a wagon because I thought it would be cool if guys would get beat by a girl and the station wagon, so it's kind of a double whammy. <laughs> so now, do, 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 do both of you, do you guys have any like inspirational drivers that inspired you? Um, <clears throat> inspirational? I don't, I don't know about inspirational. I mean, I, you know, we grew up, like I said, grew up in a race family, and and um, you know, our our travel trips were going to the drag strip and watching the big guys, and you know, John Force was always somebody that was cool to, to watch and watch his progression and then his daughters and so the Force family is pretty cool um, obviously my own family and then we've got lots of friends that we've made along the way in the in the racing community and, and I actually you know absolutely look up to each one of those I mean they've all not, not offered us just friendship but you know we're all like a big family and, and I feel like I've learned things from each and every one of them so um, as far as just one person I don't know that there's just one person I think there's there's several people there that that are inspirational that I that I look up to. So well, certainly, in, go ahead. In a drag racing world where it's predominantly male, and you know, to be accepted into that and treated like one of the guys is, is a I, it's an honor to have that. So. So now, what was it like getting behind the wheel for the first time in drag racing? What was it like? Yeah, for the first time getting behind the wheel and going down the track. Well, I remember the first pass I made in the lead sled, the, the original lead sled, um, was just a motor pass, and um, of course, that's the fastest thing I, I had ever been in, and uh, I made my first pass uh, in Wichita Falls at the drag strip there, and um, I had my brother in the passenger seat, and uh, I remember, you know, them saying, your shift light will come on, don't worry, you don't have to think about anything, and I remember getting to the end of the track and, you know, the motor's loud and we both got helmets on and I remember screaming at the top of my lungs and saying, my shift light never came on. And he looked at me and he said, you never got fast enough. <laughs> so we hot lapped the car and went and made another pass. And then uh, from that point, I was, you know, every, every pass is I want to go faster, want to go faster. And so they introduced the nitrous and, you know, one kit became two kits and it was always faster, faster, faster. So I think I think you always have to ease into something. I, I you know you can't just jump into something that's a four second car and expect to be good at it. So practice and and uh, learning from other people and and being humble enough to realize that you you know you have to learn and you have to start somewhere. So um, it was an adrenaline rush, you know. And I like I said, I always wanted to go faster. And you know, even after my wreck and um, and all that was that happened with that I you know I'm not afraid to get back behind the wheel and and the goal is to go faster than the last car so so with the with that need for speed do you ever think you'd uh, get a pro mod <laughs> um you know I never I've never even thought about getting a pro mod you know I I uh started out racing and doing a little grudge racing and then true street and now we'll do some outlaw street and I'm just kind of you know, easing into where I fit in. I, I The thought of racing a pro mod never even crossed my mind. Yeah. Maybe in the future. Maybe. You never know. I never say never to anything. I'm always open to to, uh, to anything. Always up for challenge. So now, besides your husband, Gary, do you have any other crew members for the car? Um, yeah, you know, we, um, when it was a Nike car last year, um, Blake and Brandy McBride were a big part of our a big part of our team. They they traveled to almost every single race with us, and um, you know they became family with for us too. And if we were at a race, they were at a race. I mean, they've got two small kids, and it was it was quite a sacrifice for them to travel all those miles with us, but they did it. And um, that ended in May, and and they're still part of our team. And um, you know, Dwayne Biddle and Russell Gardner. Um, have been a, a crucial part of our team. Alan, 
Owen. Matt Owen. Who else am I forgetting? David Strickland. Mr. Wendell. Mr. Wendell. I mean, we've got we've got a big crew. You know, a lot of people have contributed to the to the first car and to, and to now the second car. And so, there's so many people that that are a part of that. It, it's um, we have a lot of people to thank. So a lot of people put a lot of effort into the first car and now the second one too. And and we're appreciative of that. Now, do you guys have any sponsors? Uh, we do. Um, you know, Oaks Performance obviously is our biggest sponsor. That's uh, that's my husband. Um, it's his blood, sweat, and tears that goes into to um, build the motor and and the late nights and and things like that. But there are a lot of people have put a lot of a lot of work into this um, concept performance with with the block, uh, Mr. Wendell's Motorsports and Sonic with the transmission. Uh, Metri- Metroplex machine, Frankenstein engine dynamic. Uh, we'll do our heads and intake, I believe, as well. Um, dedicated Motorsports did all of the turbo piping and and uh, all the all of that fabrication. Uh, James Mowdy at Hazard Fab did all of the cage work and safety work and uh, parachutes. Jonathan Amador of J and M Fabrication and Customs is doing the paint job, which we expect will be absolutely nothing short of amazing um billet specialties did some fancy special things with our beadlocks that we're pretty excited about um obviously nitrous outlet and um who am i forgetting well we've always and we, you know then we've got our our media people that that always give us you know great great uh exposure and that's um chris graves at max tackle um aaron gonzalez with nx gonzo worldwide ls owners um car chick and uh, who am I forgetting? Anyone? I think I've got that. I think I've got everybody on there. Yeah. So asphalt. I should I should say uh, shout out to asphalt. Pro uh, one racing and safety doing the belt, and I think the engine diaper. So we've got a lot of like I said, a lot of people who have who have jumped on board with us this year and we're really excited and, and very thankful for all of the help that we've been offered. So now, last year, how many events did you guys run? Um, well, we, we went out in May, Memorial Day weekend at um, Shannon Morgan's Redemption Race with where I crashed at uh, in Ennis and that was Memorial Day weekend. So we, we won an event um, at North Star Dragway uh, I think it was in March, the Doomsday event. Um, I was the first woman to win a True Street No Prep, um, and at that time it was a it was a combined class. True Street Outlaw Street wasn't a split class for that race, so it was a combined class that that I took home the first first place win. And then we um, we went to Kansas for a No Prep race in Kansas. Um, gosh, where else did we travel last year? But that's been a long time. It's been a year ago, so it's hard for me to recall. Um, we hit most of them that are in this area. Yeah, anything that's in this area, we we try to hit. And then even after the crash, you know, we we travel with our team. I mean, Dwayne Biddle uh, in the Dragonfly, Matt Owen, Jonathan Amador, all those guys still, you know, are racing, and so we would still follow them to all the races. So we, even though we weren't driving a car, we still went to all the events. Right. This year, our event list is quite a bit longer. So for the for the new car, you have a lot of events scheduled already. on our calendar we, we're kind of trying to time this first event um, we're, we're in, you know, obviously in the paint phase right now so we're just waiting for the, the car to come back from the body shop and um, then Gary will do his, his work and put the motor in and, and put it all together with the help of some other guys and um, but we've got a list of a whole list of races you know there, there are four I think four or five redemption mm-hmm. races this year uh, we, we actually are signed up to do drag week this year there are four or five events at uh, North Star Dragway that we'll hit. Um, some Dirty South No Prep races are on the list. Um, LSX versus the World in Kansas. That's a, an event put on by Danny Davis and Worldwide LS owners. Um, what am I missing? I don't know. I'm sure there's going to be some in between. Yeah, there's, I'm sure there's some in between that we you know don't have on our calendar yet or <laughs> haven't been announced yet. You know, just kind of 
the, the goal is to race all over the place and wherever we can, you know, every other weekend or every weekend of that. So we, we plan to put a lot of miles on, on the road this year, doing a lot of traveling and going to different states and doing, doing different events and getting exposure. So. Right. So now when you and Gary get ready get ready for a weekend of drag racing, what what goes into preparation to get this car ready? <laughs> um, well, I'm a planner, so for me, the, the preparation for a weekend race starts on Monday. Um, so if we come home from an event on Sunday night, that means the next day I'm, you know, I'm getting ready for the next weekend. I'm, we're cleaning out the trailer and loading up groceries and, and supplies because we like to make sure that, you know, you spend a long, long weekend at the track and you've got a team there with you. You want to feed everybody and make sure everybody's got fluids and hydration and, um, so it, it, and then we both, you know, we both run a business. So it, it's making sure that things are in order for our businesses, so that we can be gone over a weekend, and that we've got somebody to handle those things for us. So, um, and then Gary's got his job cut out for him with, you know, taking the car in and going through everything and making sure everything's ready for the next event. So, um, in the summer when we're racing every weekend or every other weekend, it can be it can be quite busy, and we just we don't have a lot of time for other things, which we try to try to do those things in the off season so that we get to see all of our friends. So, so what are your favorite tracks to run on? Well, by far, you know, North Star Dragway is my favorite. That's my home track. Um, and you know, when we go there, we, we feel like we're family and, and they treat us like family. And, um, it's, it's just a great facility. The, the, the staff there is wonderful. Um, David Strickland takes care of, prepping the track and making sure it's safe and and i don't know that there's anybody that does a better job than he does um we love thunder valley also we think that's a great great facility to run at um had a nice time at at salsa ennis is a nice track um there's no place like home there's no place like home (laughs) yeah (laughs) our first test pass will definitely be um at dragway that's when we when we bring the new car out. Our first pass will be there. So now, do you guys run quarter mile and eighth mile? Predominantly, we just run eighth mile. Now, drag week, um, I believe, is a quarter mile track. Um, so we'll do quarter mile for drag week. We'll do some changes for that, but we're we're really set up for eighth mile, and that's what we prefer. So, where where do you get your fire suit from? My fire suit? Yeah, where do you get your fire suit from? Um, Asphalt, uh, Asphalt Angels Racewear is making uh, is making a special fire suit for me. So it's being custom made by them. Fifteen. Yeah. Now, G- Gary, do you know what car? What year the car was built? The car is a '78 Fairmount wagon, just like the first one. So you guys bought the car from somebody. Was it, was it already a race car when you got it? Uh, no. This one was not, no. So you, Sean, uh, Sean she in Lawton, Oklahoma, had the car and uh, didn't have it for sale, but um, yeah. you know, kind enough to, to sell it to us so that we could, we could you know, another identical wagon. So. Yeah, after the accident, people from all over kind of went out of their way to help us find another uh, another Fairmont wagon. So now, what what would you consider some of the milestones of your career so far? Ask where they get from. Um, you know, I, I think the uh, Doomsday win last year in March was was a big deal for us. I. I, I my first winter circle picture was um, Streetcar Takeover. I think that was 2015, and I took second place. My brother took first place, and uh, so we were in the winter circle together, which was really kind of cool. That was my that was the first, you know, kind of a big big deal for us. That really satisfactory, and you know, felt go, going to going home feeling really good, even though even though I blew up the motor. Um, <laughs> I took second place, and my brother took first, so that was a lot of fun. You know, it was a good weekend. And um, and then March last year, uh, winning Doomsday, um, Michael Hollis and Barrett Green are good friends of ours, and they put on a great event. And um, so winning that at our home track with all of our friends around, you know, 
there and stuff. So it was that was a big deal. I mean, that we celebrated that with a lot of people that we really cared about. So um, I don't think there was anything sweeter than that. Um, and then we, we were in Drag Illustrated last year, and then again this year, which was pretty cool. Um, like I said, we get a lot of a lot of great coverage from a lot of good photographers, and Chris Chris Braves has, has been instrumental in getting us out there and and uh, in publications. Um, Carcraft Magazine. Carcraft Magazine. We were in a couple times last year. Um, so you know, all those things are really nice. You, you see your name in, in print, and that's that's kind of cool. It gives your team recognition, and and that's always mm-hmm. a good feeling. So, um, and and even the wreck, mm-hmm. you know, as bad as it was, and and it was it was pretty brutal, and um, obviously ended that ended the first vehicle. But even that was you know a learning experience for me. So, I mean, I don't. I don't think that, I mean, as bad as it was, it, 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 I still took something away from that as well. Okay. Now, my wife was asking me to ask you how many trophies have you won? Well, I've got, I've got two, right? Two? We've had a few runner-ups and the, the one first place in the... Yeah, I've had two, I've had two runner-ups and, uh, first, and then one first place. So let me, let me ask you a few fun questions here now. All right. Do you do you, you have any hobbies outside of drag racing? Um, I'm a hunter as well. We we Gary and I like to hunt together. That's another thing that we do. Um, at most everything we do that the, the hobby is something we do together. Um, we we don't spend a lot. Of, we don't have a lot of downtime. So any downtime that we have, it we do we're we're doing something together. So uh, we're both hunters. We both like to travel, although we don't do a lot of that anymore, um, unless it's for racing. Um, and we both work a lot. I mean, like I said, we both we both own own and run businesses, so we put a lot of hours in for working. And and um, so I don't know. Those are our only hobbies, right? Yeah, that's about it. I know it's not exciting, but that's it. Racing and hunting is about all we do. <laughs> yeah, my wife likes going turkey hunting barefooted. <laughs> Yeah, she she likes to run after him and actually try to catch him and by hand. Well, that's that's aggressive. Yeah, yeah that's aggressive. I, I can't say I've ever done that. I did hunt an alligator last year, but I I've never barefoot hunted a turkey. How how was alligator hunting? It was pretty incredible. Um, adrenaline rush like you can't imagine. A uh, year. Uh, you know, the only thing that would have made that better is if Gary had been able to go. He didn't get to go with me. Um, he had a lot going on at the shop, so he had to stay behind. And um, But it was uh, probably, number, of all the hunts I've done, that was number two on the list for sure. I, I want to do that again. And I waited five years to, to draw a tag to get to go, and I wasn't going to miss it. So um, definitely that was a bucket list thing for me, and um, I want to do it again and, and have him be able to go with me. So. So, um, hi, my name's Tanya. Anyways. Hi. Hi. Well, five, uh, five years ago, we were in Florida, and we stopped at this one gas station. There was a swamp in the woods behind the gas station. I told Dave, I'll be right back. So I went walking in the woods toward the swamp. I saw an alligator. I took pictures and everything. Motherfuckers started chasing me. I was like, I had my knife on me. I wanted to stab it so bad, but I ran away. <laughs> It's pretty. Um, it's pretty exhilarating to be that close to something that um, that can take your arm off. I was. Um, I was. Worse, so. I was literally sixty inches from it. Sixty inches. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm kind of an a adrenaline junkie. I. I self proclaimed. Self proclaimed adrenaline junkie. I just. You know. I like the thrill of things. We don't have kids, so Gary and I are Gary and the kids, and we try to have as much fun as we can. Well, Dave has a daughter. Between me and Dave, we don't have kids. I see. And um, when I was 13 years old, I went bungee jumping. Um, um, also, the the turkey hunting. See, this is what I do. I have a bow and arrow with me, and I have a knife with me, and I have a gun. But I, most of the time, I don't take those with me. I just take the knife and just go run barefoot in the summer in the forest and chase the turkeys. As soon as I get close to them, I throw the knife at them and kill them right there. That's pretty crazy. You like Tarzan, right? <laughs> no, I like 
It's. I think Native American Indians used to do this barefoot. You cut your little muscle there. Can you say that again? I think the Native American Indians used to do this barefoot. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. They did. Mm, well, I don't have no Native blood. I'm just. I just. I just love hunting <coughs> turkeys. I love eating turkey. It's my favorite food. <laughs> as long as you're having fun, right? That's what matters. Yep, and I love the pretty feathers. If someone gave you yeah, they're beautiful. Oh, yeah. So, if someone gave you guys $350 million to build a racetrack, where would you build it and what features would it have? $350 million? Yeah. Build a racetrack. you build it? Well, it'd have to be in Texas. Right. And we would have to have David Strickland there. Right. And we would definitely consult with him and Gene and uh, make sure that it had a lot of uh, a lot of seating for the uh, spectators, a lot of parking. For the racers? For the racers. Uh a very long shutdown area for safety. Um, what else? No metal guardrail. Shannon Morgan's rule. We don't race at the, the tracks with metal guardrail. Would you have a Would you have a, a roof that would be able to close in case if it rains, so you could race indoors? That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if you could do it with three hundred and fifty million, but that'd be a good idea. Yeah, you can yeah. you can actually do that. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Ted has some serious exhaust fans. Mm-hmm. You could build ten mansions with three hundred fifty. No, you could build three hundred mansions with three hundred fifty million dollars. Three hundred mansions. Yeah. yeah. Probably. So if you could build, three- I'd be happy with. I'd be happy happy with just a a. a, a, a Generic drag strip in my backyard. I'd be okay with that, just for some chest passes. Right. <laughs> it doesn't even have to be fancy. I'd just be okay with that. No, but with three hundred fifty million dollars, you could be able to build a dome. If you could build three hundred mansions with it. So, what's right. your what's your guys' favorite food? What's what? Favorite food. Oh, favorite food. Um, well, Mexican food for me, for sure. I like gluten-free stuff myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Karen. Yeah. Um, I, I think Gary doesn't have a favorite. I think he just likes all food. Which like one, to eat. Which one yeah, cooks? we both like to eat. Which, I would say steak, probably. Which one of you cooks? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, we both cook. I grill and Leah cooks inside. Yeah, it's a joint effort because I don't like it. I'm not a not a typical female. I don't like to cook and I hate to shop. So, um, we cook together to make it not as brutal. And I do all my shopping when I have to online. <laughs> I love going to the store. It's fun. So, what's your guys' favorite drink beverage? Non-alcoholic or alcoholic? Favorite drink? Yeah, favorite drink. Bullet and Coke. Yeah, I mean, if we're drinking alcohol. If we're drinking, it's whiskey. Yeah, whiskey and Coke or beer. We like beer. Yeah. Sure. If we're not drinking, just water's fine. We're not, you know, we're not big Coke people or soda people or whatever you call it. Soft drinks. I'm from Texas, so everything's Coke. Um, what's, what's your favorite music? Oh gosh, do we have a favorite music? We like all music. I, I mean, I, we listen to a variety of things. We like seventies. We like country. We like. I mean, we like. We're not really picky about music. We like. We like all kinds. We go see Journey every year when they come to Dallas. So. Yeah, I love Journey. They're pretty good. So what's what's your guys' favorite movie that you guys like together? Do that again, I can hear What's your guys' favorite movie? Oh gosh, uh, we you know we I don't remember the last time we sat down and watched 
we like funny movies. Yeah, we like funny movies. We just don't, you know, the, the, <laughs> we, generally, we generally watch um, movies when we're on an airplane, because that's the only time that the, the both of us are sitting still and for long enough to watch a movie. I mean, typically, um, even if we start a movie at night, we're both so tired that one of us doesn't make it through. Yeah, Leah. Um, Leah doesn't make it through. <laughs> Uh, Paul Hannah, bridesmaid, 40-year-old virgin. Um, what else? Internship. Yeah, we like funny stuff. That's cool. So now, when, when you guys are, like, racing at Denton, do you have a, a greatest competitor at Denton? You guys are friends with all these guys, but not on the starting line. Say that again? I said you're friends with all these guys, but not on the starting line. The starting line is a whole different ball game. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, I think when you go to the starting line, everything kind of changes. You know, you, you get your game face on and you're racing. Um, but even at, you know, at the, at the end of the track, um, you're friends. So, I mean, whether I... We're racing someone and we're next to them, and if it's a friend of yours, it sucks to lose, but you're happy for them that they won. You know, I mean, it's kind of, like I said, we're all competitors and we all want to win, but if, if it's your friend and, and they go on to, to win, you know, the next round and the next round, then you're, you're genuinely happy for them. Um, but I don't, I don't... Yeah, I mean, we, we do this for fun. Um, we are competitive, but not to the point of making it miserable you know what I mean we don't talk shit um, we just we kind of do what we're gonna do and you know if we win great if not hey you know like Leah said we're we're probably rooting for one of our friends who's going up next so we're pretty excited about drag week this year this is our first year to do drag week and um, we're doing it with some some really good friends of ours John John Dodson uh, James Carter Jason Dosher um Will Dugas, all all good friends of ours that you know we race with here as well, and and they've all done drag week, so they're they're experienced at it. We're the rookies; we've never done it, so we're we're looking forward to um, to that new adventure and doing it with our friends. So kind of excited about that too. So again, everybody's competitive, but you know at the end of the day, you're all friends and you help each other. So right, like if someone another guy needed a part, you take the part off your car and lend them a part. Oh, sure. Yeah. As long as you're not racing each other. I mean, <laughs> if I'm still in and I'm racing you, then, you know, I'm going to probably keep the part and race. So, um, well, if you're, if you're, yeah. if you're out if for, you if, if you're out for, the, if you're out for the day, then you lend them a part off your car. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Usually we carry a lot of spares. Yeah. Gary's, Gary's a, um, needs two of everything kind of person. So, uh, we typically have a lot of extras. Right. So, so what's been the fondest memory of your drag racing career? What's our fondest memory? Doomsday. It would have to be the Doomsday win. Yeah, because we have good people there. Yeah. It would have to be the yeah. It would have to be last March the Doomsday win because we had so many good people there and like I said, it was it wasn't just a. I mean, I still watch those videos. 
from last March, and I I relive that excitement all over again because I I'm in the car, so I don't see I don't see the celebration on the starting line. But to watch those again, even now, I still get that I still get that excited feeling because it was I, I mean the it's it was a feeling I, I just couldn't explain. Um, but that had to be our fondest memory. I mean. There's probably 30 people in the winner's circle photo. Yeah. I mean, it's not, that's the thing. It wasn't just because we won. It was because we celebrated it with so many great people. Um, and, and we that, won. And we won. And that's what makes it special. You know, I mean, if you're celebrating with that many great people that, that genuinely, you know, are happy for you that you're in the winner's circle, I mean, that's fun. That's exciting. So that's right. probably that's probably our fondest memory so far. Yep. And there'll be plenty of more memories to make. So now, That's the plan. so now, go ahead, go ahead. So now, if people that are listening right now want to find the schedule where you're going to be at, what's the best way for them to find your schedule at? Um, we have a, a Facebook page, Led Led Leah, and um, you can follow or like that page. And I typically post um, when we're going to go to a race. You know, I'll I'll, I'll post stuff that we're going to be there. So. That's probably the best place is the Let's Blood Leah page. Oaks Performance also has a page. Um, but that's mostly, you know, build stuff. So I would say if you want to follow the, the car specifically and you want to follow our schedule, Let's Blood Leah's Facebook page would be the place to go. Sounds good. Well, Leah, Gary, I want to thank both of you for your time for the interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, you guys got some final words to say to everybody out there? Final words to say? Um, I love to walk the world. <laughs> I would just like to say, you know, again, thank you for everybody that supported us and and cheered for us and, and been there for us. And, and um, that, you know, 2017, all the people that were there for us and, and the times that we were down and out and 2018, all the people that have jumped on board to, to be a part of it without without even knowing what's to come. So just a big thank you to everybody that's been so supportive. We, we really appreciate that. Sounds great. Well, thanks again to both of you guys for being on here. Thank you so much for having us. And I wish you the best of luck in the, uh, this 2018 racing season. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, you guys have a good night. All right, you too. Okay, bye-bye. 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 That's funny. <laughs> 